Matthew chapter 21, verse 23. <clears throat> and when he was coming to the temple, the chief priests and the elders of the people came unto him as he was teaching and said, By what authority dost thou these things? All right? They talking to Yahushua at this point, right? He was, in, he was teaching, and, and the, the people that came to him, they said, by what authority do you do these things, right? Certain things he did, he, got to, he just got done knocking over some stuff. They, you know, he, he caused an uproar, right? So they asked me, they said, by what authority do you do these things? Let's hear it. And who gave you, and who gave thee this authority? Mm-hmm. And Yahshua answered and said unto them, I also will ask you one thing. He said, I'm going to ask you one thing, right? He said, before I answer your question, let me ask you a question. You know what I'm saying? Let me hear about it. Which, if ye tell me, I and likewise will tell you by what authority I do these things. That's fair. Let's hear it. The baptism of John, whence was it? From heaven or of men? He said, what authority do I do these things? And from where did I get that authority? All right, let me ask you one question. If you answer my question, I'll tell you. All right? The baptism of John, did that come from the Most High God? Or did it come from a man? All right? Read that part again for me. The baptism of John. Whence was it, from heaven or of men? All right, let's hear about it. And they reasoned with themselves, saying, if we See, they thought about it, right? They thought about that thing. They said, you know what? If we what? If, look, if we shall say from heaven, he will say unto us, why did ye then, why did ye not then believe him? Right? So they were conscious. They were conscious to know, if I answer this way, he going he to put me in a corner and say, oh, why, did, why you didn't believe it? If you can acknowledge that it came from heaven, why you didn't believe it? Why you didn't follow after what John was teaching? But, but if we shall say of men, we shall fear the, we shall, we fear the people, for all hold John as a prophet. Right? He said, but if we, if we say that his baptism was just made up, it was of men, he like, all these people that think John is a prophet, they're going to be against us. Right? So they're stuck in a hard place. They're like, we really don't accept John. Right? But at the same time, we can't just flat out say we don't accept John because we need the people on our side. And the people rock with John right now. Right? So Yahushua tried to put him in that corner. Let's see what happened next. And they answered Yahushua and said, we cannot tell. Uh-huh. And he said unto them, neither tell I you by what authority I do these things. He was like, yo, you can't tell? All right. But you can't tell, I can't tell you nothing either. Right? I can't give you no information either if you can't tell where, where John the Baptist got his baptism. Alright? Let's keep going. That's some good other good stuff in here. But what think ye? A certain man had two sons, and he came to the first and said, Son, go work today in my vineyard. He has two sons. It's a parable he's giving us, right? So he has two sons. To so the first son, he said, Hey son, go work. Right? 
Go do what I told you to do. Let's see what this sign says. He answered and said, I will not. All right? First sign said, no. Dad told him, go. Go to work. First sign said, nah. I'm not going to do it. Just told Father. He said, no, I'm not, I'm not going to do it. I can't do it. I, yeah, I got other things I need to do. But what happened next? But afterward, he repented and went. So after that, he changed his mind, and then he went ahead and did it. Right? What up? He came to the second and said, likewise. And he answered and said, I go, sir. He went to the second son, and he was like, go. Go work. Right? Second son said, for sure, I'm gonna, let me go ahead and do that right now. Right? Let's hear about it. And went not. But he didn't actually do it. Let's hear about the rest of this parable. Whether of them twain did the will of his father. He said, of the two, which one did the will of his father? Right? They said unto him, the first. And they all answered correctly and said, the first. Because the first, even though he was told to do something, and he said, no, I'm not going to do it, he ended up doing it later. Right? Watch what Yahushua say when he tied us all together. And Yahushua said unto them, verily I say unto you, that the publicans and the harlots go into the kingdom of God before you. For John came unto you in the way of righteousness, and ye believed him not. But the publicans and the harlots believed him, and ye, when ye had seen it, repented not afterward that ye might believe him. All right? So now we're in a position where the Most High God is setting it up for us. Right? He's letting us know that it's always a chance to get it right. Right? As long as you obey, uh, are willing to obey his word, right? You have that opportunity to get it right. We've told him, though, right? We've told him, though. We've put in a position. A lot of us told us yes and didn't do it, just like the second son, right? But we still have an opportunity to repent, turn around, and do the right thing, right? Just because you ran your mouth and said something against God in your past, as long as you didn't blast me, that's the only one he said you ain't going to come back from, Right? He said, just because just you ran you ran your mouth, like, nah, I don't believe, nah, the Bible, you know what I'm saying? The Bible was written by a white man. It was used to, you know what I'm saying, enslave our people. It's made up. It's not historical. You can't die. Nah, nah. just because you ran your mouth saying all that stuff, that don't mean that later you can't come back and be like, you know what, that's right. That thing was right the whole time. You know what I'm saying? That thing right. It's not for me to turn around. Right? You just got to gotta have a little bit of humility and just admit, you know, I was wrong. Right? You got to be interested. Right? You got to look into it and you got to make sure you make the correction. That's what we're here for. Most High God is not looking like, Most High God, he's not, he not full of pride like us. You know what I'm saying? He ain't, looking, he ain't looking for you to sit here. All he wants you to do is admit you were wrong and then we can get moving. That's it. Admit you were wrong, do it right. We can get moving after that. All the rest of this stuff that we do, that's just us. We just let a whole bunch of stuff get in the way. We make a whole bunch of excuses, try to make sure that we, 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 you know, we got our life lined up first. Whole point of the book is you got to give up your life, right? We got to be ton done with that. Like, uh, no, I don't it don't matter where I am right now. It's time to get right, all right? And we always had that chance. Open up. Where were we at last week? Exodus 23. Well, yeah, 23, 22, 31. Oh, we didn't finish 20? Uh, if 31 ain't the last verse, no. If it ain't, yeah, if it ain't the last verse. It's Exodus chapter, uh, potentially Exodus chapter 22, verse 31. If that's the last verse of 22, then we just going to start off right at uh, 23. Matter of fact, give me, go ahead and give me 31. Yeah, 22, 31. Verse. That's the last verse. Still read it for me, and then we'll, we'll move on to 23. So just to, just to recap, for the last couple weeks, we've been reading over the commandments, right? Last time we went through the whole Bible, we started off the same way. But we didn't, we didn't dig deep into the commandments. We stuck with the narrative, right? We just kind of, oh, this is what Moses did. He went through here. This is some of the things we experienced when we was in the wilderness. Yada, yada, yada. But throughout these couple years when we read this Bible, I realized I came a lot of, across a lot of people that really didn't have a deep knowledge of the law, of the commandments, right? They, had, they say they do, but when you get to talking with them, you see the only thing they really know is feast days, you know, they know what you can and can't eat, you know, don't eat no pork and all that type of stuff. But they don't know, like, the depth. Like, they know the Sabbath. It's like things like that. Oh, you got to wear tassels. But they didn't really know the depth and, and the meaning and everything. You, you talk to them about the law, and it, they don't understand the spirit of the law, right? They don't understand, like, what it was intended for. They don't understand how it governed our people, what was it good for our people. And if you ask them tough questions like that, even though they say Christians is this and they talk 
about Christian, they say I'm a Hebrew Israelite and I keep the law. They're not able to right, accurately articulate, right? A lot of a lot of Hebrew Israelites, what they tell you is the law is not done away with, and you got to keep the law to be saved. But to be saved, you got to keep the law the best you can, right? They, they it's impossible to keep the old law. So it's like you ain't nothing but you just a law keeping Christian at that point. You just a Christian to keep the law. It's no if you gonna look at it, take what the book says. Right? We have to make sure we look at it and take what the books say. But that happens to us because what we're doing is it's like it's like the parable. We don't have to go get it, but it's like the parable that Yahushua gave us. He said a man can go in and he'll clean out his entire house. Right? Get all the spirits out of that thing. Right? Then they go into some dry place and then come back with seven times the amount that they came that was there in the first place. Because he cleaned, huh? Yeah, because he cleaned it up, and that thing was empty. And they just, he was like, okay, I'm bringing some friends back this time, right? And that's what happens when we, when we, when we are Christians, are Muslims, or whatever religion that we stuck in, and then we get a little bit of truth, we say, I don't want to be Christian no more, right? And you think that you've done something, but really you haven't, because you haven't taken the time to relearn. Right? The only thing you know, all your habits, all your all all your your, your presuppositions, everything that you have is based off of Christianity. So now when you call yourself a Hebrew Israelite, all you're doing is taking Hebrew thoughts and conforming them to Christianity. Right? So now it goes from impossible to stop sinning as a Christian, now impossible to keep the law as a Hebrew Israelite. Right? The same mistake mistaken principle is just applied to a different mistaken principle. Right? What we need to do is we need to go back, look into the book, understand it, make sure that we have it, and reteach ourselves so that we don't have to be Hebrew Israelites anymore. We don't have to be Christians anymore. We don't have to be Muslims anymore. We don't have to be Jewish anymore. Right? We look at these things in the book, and we can just be disciples of the Messiah. That's all we want to do. We want to follow after what the Messiah did and be disciplined in his teaching. We want to believe every word that he provided us. And we want to walk in faith according to that word, right? That's what he gives for us. And part of that is understanding the character of God, right? A huge piece of that is understanding the character of God. How do you get the character of God? From the New Testament, right? No. You look at the New Testament, they're referring you to the old, right? And that's God. You would, but you wouldn't know that unless you know his character. Grab uh, real quick, just real quick, then we'll get to it. Leviticus chapter uh, 26. What up, verse 13, 14, 15, 20-something? Let's try 13 first. It's Leviticus chapter 26. Oh, we got over there in Exodus 23. We're going right back. But real quick, just, it's like little things like this that we, we, if you don't know it, you don't understand God's character. And if you don't understand God's character, then when you're looking at the New Testament, then you can tell, you can make the New Testament be whatever you want. Right? She said, no, boy, stop touching. Oh, okay. All right. I am the Lord your God, which brought you forth out of the land of Egypt, that ye should not be their bondmen, and I have broken the bonds of your yoke and made you go up. That's 14? Yes, sir. 14. Give me, uh, give me like 26. You looking for the other land? No, nah, I'm looking for uh, an the whole argument. story. He's going to start giving some blessings at first. What you say, verse what? 26, maybe? I know it ain't 26, 26, though, but is that blessings or curses? Give me curses. All right, go up a little bit then. I want the blessing. You're going to tell him what he will do for him. 28? What 28 say? I will walk contrary unto you in purity. No, not 28. Fourteen. It's fourteen. What fourteen say? Maybe I was right. But if you will not hearken unto me, and I will not do all these commandments, and if you shall despise my statutes, give me nine then. For I will respect unto you, and make you fruitful and multiply, and establish my, establish my covenant with you. You want ten? Ten? Yes. 
All right, so this is, uh, this is Leviticus chapter 26, verse 10. Watch what we say. This is how you get the character of God. You look, at, you look at the things that he commanded, what he expected from the people, the way that he held people accountable, what he says is the punishment when you don't do what he says. This tells you this is what I want, right? This is what God wants. That gives you his character. That gives you what he hoped for. If it was ideal for God, this is how it would be, right? Now, if you fit the New Testament into the framework of the Old Testament, then it gives you a complete picture. If the New Testament is not put in that framework, then you can make the New Testament whatever you want because you don't have all the information, right? This is, uh, this is uh, Leviticus chapter 26, verse 10. And ye shall eat old store. He said, and you shall eat what? Old store. You won't eat old store. Old store is, you know, I had a crop. I had a whole bunch of wheat. I pulled up all my wheat, and then I put it inside of the cabinet, right? Then after that, it was inside of the cabinet, and after it was inside of the cabinet, it sat there for a while. Now I have a new crop. I pulled up my new crop, and I put that new crop inside of the cabinet, right? And now when it's time to eat, he said, you're going to eat the old store. I got a brand new crop that just got put inside of the cabinet. He said, you're going to eat the no old store, and why? You shall eat old store and bring forth the old because of the new. Because of what? The new. So when the new come, it's going to make me want to eat the old. I mean, let's, see, let's say you got a gallon of milk, right? You got you a nice little gallon of milk. And then all of a sudden, for some reason, somebody bring you a brand new gallon of milk. How many gallons of milk do your family eat? No, I mean, you know, some of our family might, might get through a lot. How many, <laughs> how many your family do? In a few days, I mean, your, I mean, your family get through it. A day, a day like a gallon, a gallon a day, a gallon a day. So let's just say, let's just say a gallon a day, right? Y'all, y'all, y'all ain't never gonna go. We need, baby. I mean, we get through. We don't really drink milk in my house, right? So we got a gallon, right? How, how long it take milk to get over? About two weeks. About two weeks. We, uh, you give us a gallon. You know what I'm saying? We gonna struggle to get through a gallon in two weeks, right? So imagine somebody giving us two gallons of milk, right? I got one gallon in one week, and that thing, we just, you know, we kind of drinking it like regular. But then we leave it, and then somebody bring another gallon to it. Matter of fact, T did that one, right? We had a gallon. T is like, uh, you know what I'm saying? We got a gallon of milk. Y'all want to come pick it up? So he's like, oh, yeah, we can't pick it up. So we had this old gallon, and we were like, we better drink that old one, right? Because that old one's going to go bad. So we started to drink that old one. This is what God tells me. He said, you're going to have to drink. Go read that thing. Not drink. You used to, what, read what it say. This is uh, chapter, uh, chapter 26. Leviticus chapter 26, verse 10. And ye shall eat old store and bring forth the old because of the new. When you get that new, it's going to make you go back to the old. Is that not what Yahushua told us? He said, old wine skins belong with what? Old wine skins. He said, you can't put the new wine skins with the old wine skins. What happens if you do that? First. I mean, you mess around. I got some brand new wine, and I put that thing in an old wine skin, what's going to happen to it? It's gonna burn. That thing going to burn. So he said, what you got to do is you got to take new wine skin, and you got to put the new wine inside of it. Right? That's what he's trying to let us know. These things, it's, it's an appropriate time for everything. Once you have that new, you're supposed to go back to the old. Right? That's why when you hear Yahushua talk, he's going to say, what did Moses tell you? Moses, he represents the old. Still, Yahushua, right? The God, most high God. He going to tell you, well, what did Moses tell you? He going to tell you, did not the scripture say? He said, did not your law say? You'd have believed Moses, you'd believe me. He going to tell you, if you would have believed Moses, you would have believed me. That's book. Those type of things, if you don't know the history, if you don't know the character of God, those type of things just fly. It's just like, oh, look, he's talking about Moses. Oh, it must be some riddle. Right? For us, it's not. For us, we look at it and be like, that makes sense. That's God. That's, that's how he works. He's been working like that for years. Right? All of it is just confirmation. For us, it's more powerful at that point. You don't know. It's just like, okay, well, let me let me dream up something or let me, let me figure out what this means. Right? Let me read T.D. Jake's book and then maybe he can explain to me how God wants me to live my life. Then you got to come up with something. I'll talk to your brother. You got to come up with something. See, when Jesus was walking on water, that represented him walking on people. 
That's the type of thoughts that you have, right? And you can, I mean, you can open that up in the book. You can be like, see, Revelation said water represents people in Revelation. So then when Jesus will walk, you can do that. But if you don't have the constraints of understanding the character of God, you don't have nothing that it narrow you down to the right place. So you just all over the darn place. You coming up with anything. Nobody gonna tell you nothing because don't nobody know. Right? That's why we get into the commandments. We want to understand. This is uh, Exodus chapter 23, just verse 1. Let's try to cover some ground. This is Exodus chapter 23. Thou shalt not raise a false report. Put not thine hand with the wicked to be an unrighteous witness. What does that mean? Don't be lying to nobody. Don't be lying to nobody. Don't, Don't get nobody in trouble with a lie. You sitting there, you telling, nah, T did it. I mean, you're right out there, nah, T did it. He said, don't be telling them lies. Don't lie on nobody. Don't be a false witness to somebody. All right, let's keep going. Thou shall not follow a multitude to do evil. Uh-oh. This is one, this is one hard for, especially our people. This is one hard for our people. You get something that's popular, you, you see that thing on the internet all day. You get a whole bunch of people in the comment section talking about one person, what are they going to do? Yeah, no, nah, everybody right. You you is kind of tripping, bro. Right? That's how they do it. You got you got the majority of people saying something about one, they going they gonna get their hand. They ain't even gonna listen to the issue. They just gonna be like, well, all I'm saying, it must be true. Right? Listen with the book. This is our law. And y'all just have to think about we live our lives every day. And what wisdom do do people give us versus the wisdom that this book gives us? And you just tell me this thing ain't right. Watch what it says. Thou shalt not follow a multitude to do evil. Hey, don't, fo don't follow a whole bunch of people to do the wrong thing. Story of our darn life, ain't it? Just think about your whole childhood. Story of, story of our life. We followed a multitude of people to do evil. Books say don't do it. Keep going. Neither shall thou speak in a cause to decline after many to rest judgment. Right? He said, in other words, he's saying... If you got a whole bunch of people who making a voice and saying, hey, no, this is what we want to happen, but you know that thing wrong, he said, don't you raise your voice, right? Don't raise, don't raise your voice to make a judgment evil, right? Don't try to convince a judge to rule in a case or something that you know is wrong. I got a ticket I got to defend next week, so if any of y'all want to testify on my, that thing right. I'm just saying, I'm fighting that thing. Though. I'm fighting that thing. But if it was wrong, he ain't got no business going up there. I didn't speed, though. So either one of y'all, if y'all want to come up there and just, you know, testify, you know, that's fine. But if it was wrong, you don't do that thing. Right? That's, that's against our law. Our law protected everybody. Right? The rich man, the poor man. That's what I was about to say next. about the poor man. Neither shall you, neither shall your countenance, neither shall thou countenance a poor man in his cause. Right? In other words, uh, pretty much don't, don't discourage a poor man in his cause. Right, don't bring his countenance or his face low, and you know, don't make him feel bad. A poor man. So if a poor, you poor, and you got some plans, and you got some stuff that you got to do. You know what I'm saying? And you talking about something that's right. Don't sit here and go to the poor man and be like, nah, that thing ain't right. Right? Don't say that thing ain't right. He ain't supposed to just because he's poor. Right? Keep going. If you meet thine enemy's ox or his donkey going astray, look at our look at our law. He said, if you meet thy enemy's ox or donkey and they going astray. What you do? You shall surely bring it back to him again. That was your friend? No. Your enemy's ox. He said that was your enemy. You have these, you, listen, these people, if you let them tell it, you'll never find nothing like this in the Old Testament. You'll never find nothing like this. I, now see, Jesus taught you to turn the other cheek. What do you think this is? My enemy lost his ox and his donkey? And it's my responsibility to take, I don't even like, that's my enemy? You mean it's on site? Like, if I see him, I might just knock him out. But my law tells me that if I catch his ox or his donkey, I got to take it back to him. What is my law teaching me right now? Love, Love forgiveness, being a bigger person, all the stuff these people claim they teach, taking the higher role. Right? Where do you think they got it from? Where do you think the New Testament got it from? You think this is new? He told you, you better take that darn ox back to your enemy. I don't care nothing about y'all being in. Take it back to him. You know it ain't yours. 
And you know it's wandering around. You know that's his livelihood. Go take it back to him. That's our law. Our whole law represents love. It's teaching us how to love one another. It's, how, it's teaching us how to live in a community and govern ourselves. You can't just have chaos. He's sitting there trying to set things in order. A man have his eyes when if the whole community needs that, I mean, I'm mad at you. I don't really like you. I don't mess with you. And I'm clear about it. Ain't no, ain't no secret. I don't mess with you. You don't mess with me. But I know what? I know one thing, though. If I lose my eyes, I can trust my community to bring it back whether I have a problem with you or not. Because that's my livelihood. I'm going to get around. I'm going to do my thing. I'm going to live. Right? When it comes time to crush the threshing floor and I got to get my wheat and separate my wheat, I'm going to do that without my eyes. I mean, we ain't have technology. We ain't had this stuff where I can just take it to the store to go to the store. We had to get it in for sale. I lose my ox, that's my whole livelihood, my whole family for it now. You go around now, you want to see that for your enemy. You want your family, you know, the family, your enemy's family to be poor. You want that type of stuff with these wicked people. Our law didn't, our law didn't support no craziness like that. I don't care if he's your enemy, you take him back his ox. Take him back his donkey so he can get around. So he can make his livelihood. That's our lives. We brothers. Even if you a Gentile, you live in our land, keep our law. We brothers. Keep going. If thou see the donkey of him that hates thee lying under his burden and wouldest forbear to help him, thou shalt surely help with him. All right? He said, if you see, you see, you see a donkey, and this other guy who hates you, right? You know this man hates you. He always being mean to you. Right? You know he hates you. But you see that donkey under underneath his burden, right? He got, I mean, he got a big old crate that he is carrying. Donkey broke his darn leg and it's just crushing. And you walking by and you see it, you be like, oh, that's so and so donkey. Book say, you better, you better go ahead. He said, don't turn your eye to it. Go ahead, read it. If thou see the donkey of him that hates you, lying under his burden, and would forbear to help and wouldn't forbear to help him, you shall surely help with him. Mm-hmm. Keep going. Thou shalt not rest the judgment of thy poor in his cause. Mm-hmm. Keep thee far from a false matter, and the innocent and righteous slay thou not. All right? He said, stay away from a false. Start to stay away from them lies. All right? Stay away from these situations with people lying on each other and all that. Stay your butt away from them. Even in my job, they, you know, they got all that drama, people telling these lies, and they try to get me involved with Philip said this, you know, that, man, I ain't got nothing to do with none of y'all fools. None of y'all fools. Y'all get to bring me in that stuff. I handle all y'all. All y'all get written up. I don't play that stuff. You stay away. Somebody, I ain't about to sit here and play. You stay away from all that. So all that stuff just get you mad. And that's advice that these people get. I mean, these people, I mean, Tyree, who's, who's wise today? Who do these people think is wise today? Remember, Tyree's had a run. He is like making videos. They think Tyree's crazy now, though. You can't use Tyree now. Just, that's a good point. Just a year ago, just a year ago, wasn't Tyree the most wise person on Facebook, on Instagram, or wherever he, he is making videos? God will do this stuff, yeah. A year later, he's spazzing out. Ah! Will Smith gave me, gave me five million dollars. Come out, he didn't give him nothing. You know, he just on there lying, making up stuff, going through all types of stuff because he's about to lose his daughter. He crying on the video. I always say, for you to record yourself crying, like nobody caught you. You know what I'm saying? Like for you to sit here, I'm crying. Okay, let me press play. That's insane. <laughs> That's insane. But just a year ago, he was the, I remember everybody was reposting him like, hey man, they had to, you know, they do the praying hand look, hey man, oh, like, oh, you know the little things, man. I was like, oh, man, Tyree, we was, no, I know you remember, we were saying, we was like, Tyree, oh, I'm a fine one, I'm a fine one, I'm a, I might just put it on the video, so when they watching the Bible study, we can cut to a clip of Tyree being wise, and then a clip of Tyree being Tyree. <laughs> But that's how it is, right? We don't, we don't, it's no, it's no credibility required. Only thing that's required is for you to say what people want to hear. There's no credibility, there's no, there's no requirement to mean what you say, right? There's no requirement to stand on what you say. The requirement is, if you saying what I want to hear at that moment, and we deem you cool enough, we'll take it. Right? We'll take it. That ain't cool. Right? Let's go ahead and go. Let's, uh, Let's go to uh, uh, the next verse. Keep thee 
far from a false matter and the innocent and the innocent and righteous slay thou not, for I will not justify the wicked. Will Smith and Jada Pickett, he they thought he like he like they gave me they gave me what he said, he said they gave me five million dollars just to stay off because he was wilding out on Facebook for the last couple months. He said wilding out. And like just to stay off off, off of social media, they gave me five million dollars, so I'm gone. Will Smith the Jada Pickett, they released a statement. I ain't got nothing to do. They kept themselves far from a false matter. <laughs> that thing bull. They look like they like, nah, that thing ain't got nothing to do with me. That's crazy. That thing ain't got nothing to do with me. All right, keep going. Thou shalt take no gift, for the gift blinds the wise. What he's saying there is, if I'm looking at a situation and I have authority to make a decision in the situation, he's saying don't take a gift for somebody to try to, to sway the decision that you're going to make. If I got to decide, and I got to say, all right, Antonio, I heard what you did. And then, T, I heard what you did. You know what I'm saying? And in my mind, I'm looking like, after hearing both sides, you know what I'm saying, I think Antonio is owed some money. Right? But then, T come by, he say, listen, you know what I'm saying? You know me. You know what I'm talking about? I tell you what. How about I hit you? You know what I'm saying? Get this. You know what I'm saying? Take this. Go see a nice show. Don't worry about it. You'll be all right. You know what I'm saying? I'm just saying, whatever decision you make, I'm with. I'm just saying, have, have a nice show. You know what I'm saying? It's more where it came from. I take that. That might just make me like, man, T is a nice guy. Now. You know what I'm saying? He's a nice guy, but he wouldn't do that to Antonio. You know what? Antonio, you owe T money. Right? And just switch that whole decision up. Right? That's why he's saying, don't take a gift. It'll make you see the whole thing different. Right? And sometimes you won't even notice it. You just got to keep yourself clean to that thing. Like, no, nah, I got a decision to make. You can give me a gift after I make my decision. After I tell you, but you're guilty. Let's see if you want to give me that gift. Mm. Right? Keep going. And thou shalt take no gift, for the gift blinds the wise and perverts the words of the righteous. Uh huh. Also, thou shalt not oppress a stranger, for ye know the heart of a stranger, seeing you were strangers in the land of Egypt. That's right. In six years thou shalt sow thy land and shalt gather in the fruit. And notice what he's doing. You see, uh, for y'all that wasn't here for the previous week, what we try to look at is a lot of these laws were referring back to things that happened in Genesis and, and earlier in Exodus, right? So a lot of these things, you'll see he's trying to clean up situations that, 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 that came already, right? When we talked about uh, Jacob serving seven years for Laban, then you see, uh, I'm sorry, serving 20 years for Laban, seven for each daughter and six for his, his, his cattle. You'll see that there was a law then that said the max you could have a, a slave was six years, and in the seventh, he goes free. Right, so you, he created laws to address some of the situation that we already had. Likewise, here he's saying, don't oppress a stranger because you were a stranger in Egypt. You've been through that, and you've been to oppression as a stranger. He says, so don't you do it in your land. Right, keep going. In six years thou shalt sow thy land and shalt gather in the fruits thereof. But the seventh year thou shalt let it rest and lie still. Right, today these people will talk about these environmentalists and everything. That'd be a great law for them. They would love that. If you, you just said for a whole year, if you took it right now, just you started a, you started your own company called Going Green, right? Earth Green or something, something that make these people feel like you really care about the world. And you said, you know what? I have a great plan. We're going to farm and get everything we, gotta, out of, we can out of the land for six years. But in the seventh, we want everybody not to farm. I guarantee all these vegetarians to go for it, right? They'd be like, yeah, this, that, and other, da, da, da. This is God's plan. This is what the, in a different way, this is what they're trying to get us to do right now. They want us to stop, let the land grow by itself. They, they do that right now, right? I let the land grow by itself. Don't kill no animal. Don't do this. It just let everything relax for a whole year, right? That's his stuff. I got to get deep sleep. Yeah, buddy, that old story going to have to come. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Come. But if you look at it, our book, they don't say it right here, but as we get deeper into our law, he expand on that a little more. Right? He know what he say. What do he say after that? I'll give you enough for the year of rest so that you won't need nothing. Right? He said in them six years, you don't have enough to last for that following seventh year. Right. If all you got to do is do what the man said. Take a year off you have plenty. And you know what it was for? When the land just grew of itself? Like, I mean, let's say I got a field. And I got to work this field every season, right? I got to work this field, make sure everything good, everything look nice. You know what I'm saying? And they grow up, and then I got to harvest it, bring it in. For the year where it rests, you know what happens? It's for the poor. 
It just grows up for itself. Whatever happens, happens. I don't work it. I don't work the land. Whatever grows, grows. Whatever doesn't grow, doesn't grow, right? And the poor can walk through and take whatever they want. Tell me that's not beautiful. Like, tell me that's not, like, imagine a period of time of a year where poor people could just have whatever they want. Right? I mean, you don't have your own. You can just have whatever you want. It's a different environment at that point. We don't have what we have here. There's no camaraderie. You, have, you see a poor person, he's just a poor person. That's how everybody sees him. He's just a poor person. He has no value. He doesn't get anything. Matter of fact, you patting yourself on the back for giving him a dollar. And that's the reason you giving him a dollar. You ain't giving him a dollar because he need a dollar. You give him a dollar because it's like, oh, well, you know, it feel good to be able to do something for somebody. You're going to go to work and brag about it. Right? It's a different, it's a ty- entirely different community. Imagine if you like, oh yeah, I'm harvesting. You know what? My law tell me I can't harvest everything. I got to leave. I can't clean it. That's what the book said. You can't clean it. I can't just sit there and try my hardest to get everything out of my field. I just get a reasonable amount out of my field. Whatever's left, that belongs to the poor. That's our law. Our law say we cannot glean our field. We have to leave something in our field for the poor. That way when the poor are walking through, they can just be like, man, I'm hungry. I ain't got my own field. All right, I'll take that. And you can't say nothing to them. That's why I've left that for you. That's a totally different environment than what we have. You just tell me, you just stop me when I say, when, it, when we hear that our, our law is too burdensome. Let these Christians tell it, it's the letter, the letter bringeth death. You don't even know what you're saying. Our law teaches love. You know why the letter brings death? Because it was made to kill a sinner. Ain't got nothing, ain't nothing wrong with the book. It's because we sinners. That thing right. Keep going. These people gonna learn some law. For the seventh year thou shalt let it rest and lie still, that the poor of thy people may eat, and what they leave the beast, and what they leave the beast of the field shall eat. In like manner thou shalt deal with thy vineyard and with thy olive year. Six days thou shalt do thy work, and on the seventh day thou shalt rest. Thine ox and thy donkey may rest, and the son of thy handmaid and the stranger may be refreshed. Mm -hmm. And in all things that I have said unto you, be circumspect, and make no mention of the name of God. What does circumspect mean? Look where? And attention. Looking all the way around. You see a circle, like circle. You know what I'm saying? You're just looking around. You know everything that's happening. He's at everything. Pan around, right? Everything that I just told you, be aware. Pay attention to everything I just told you. Be careful about everything that I just told you. Right? Keep going. And make no mention of the name of other gods. He said, don't be talking about these other gods. I don't even want to hear you talking about them other gods. Neither let a lot of these people, of we thought now, how many gods is it right now? Who going to tell us? How many gods? Right? We look at it as one God. That's our, that's our, that's our, our teaching. That's how we look at it. It's only one God. Especially you, a good Christian, ain't nothing but one God, the one true God, right? But if you look at our, our people back then, that's not how they were thinking. That's not even how God communicated with them. God didn't communicate with them, I am the only God. God didn't even say, I'm the highest God. He called himself the most high God. Remember that. Because the understanding of the time, he said, all these people thought it was God. He told you, don't mention none of them. That's how we got to thinking about that. God never told you it was no other God. He told you there was no other God beside me. Right? That's important. That was not our thinking that there was only one God. Our thinking was it was a whole bunch of God, but our God the real deal. All the rest of you guys, y'all ain't got no power. Our God the real deal. And that's the way he reinforced. He said, don't even mention none of the God. So we got to the point, eventually, where it was like, them other God don't even exist. Because we he told us not to mention them. So for us, they don't even exist. That's how we end up getting to the teaching of one God. We spread that along to the, to the Gentiles. Then the Gentiles became Christians, trying to follow us. And then now they teach one God. But if you read the Bible and just read it closely, you'll never see that the Bible is telling you, or at least in the Old Testament, it's not telling you that it's only one God. When he's speaking, he said, I'm, I'm, I'm in Egypt. He said, these are judgments against the gods of Egypt. The most high God acknowledge their God, or at least what they call God. We just know 
that when God look at it, we make gods. Right? We make them. I sit here and I say, oh, you know what? This green pen. This green pen is what created me. Right? And I bow down and I worship it. I made that a god. God's like, all right, for sure. That's a god. Because all we see is a green pen. Y'all gonna look at me and say, you crazy for worshiping a green pen. T gonna be like, ah, oh, yeah, I rock with that green pen too. It created me too. Right? So we in it together. We worship with green pen. Y'all say it's crazy. Right? All of us in this circle, we don't understand that there's a spirit behind this green pen. So the most high God is looking at that spirit and be like, yeah, that same spirit that got you to worship that, that's a God. That's a God, right? You made that thing a God. And so now when he look at it, he's like, don't even mention it to it. Don't even mention it. Don't even make no sense. I'm trying to show y'all I'm the one that got power. I'm the one that brought your butt out of Egypt. You were sitting there, I'll let you sit there until you darn cry. You cried out to me and then I heard you. And then as soon as I heard you, I came in there and I got your butt. I split the darn See, you walk right through. Then I took you into the wilderness. Your butt got hungry. Your butt was crying, talking about you wanted to go back to Egypt. You know what I did after that? I brought some bread out of there. Then you got tired. You said, oh, I don't want I, I'm eating this bread way too. I mean, it's just, I'm tired of eating this bread. It's like coriander seed. You know what I did after that? Oh, you want some meat? I dropped quail all the way around your darn camp. He said quail were coming out of their darn nail, nose they was eating it so much. You know what Moses said when he told him before it happened? He told Moses, I'm going to give him meat. Go ahead and give him meat. Moses was like, what are we going to do? You know what I'm saying? How are we going to get meat? Are we going to kill? Are we going to slaughter all the animals that we brought? Remember, they brought our animals for the sacrifice. He's like, what do you want to do? Slaughter all the animals that we're supposed to be sacrificing? Moses didn't see how that thing was going to happen. He was like, shut up. I got this. Don't even worry about it. Next thing you know, quail just all outside of the camp. They just built up, stacked up, about six feet tall. They just picking out eating quail until it came out of their darn nose. Whole time, most high God trying to let you know I got power. Tell me one of these, one of y'all guys that's gonna do this. Don't mention it. Don't say nothing about it. That's how we got to it. One God. That's why Paul said, "You're one God, one faith, one spirit." Right? Because we ain't acknowledging none of that other stuff. There's other principalities and powers and, and other gods, right? But in the, it, it, when it comes to us, who got power? Who running the darn show? Ain't no other God beside my God. All right, keep going. Watch this. He said, don't even make mention of it. That's our law. Keep going. Three times thou shalt keep a feast unto me in the year. Uh-huh. Thou shalt keep the feast of unleavened bread. Feast of unleavened bread, which uh, contains what? Thou shalt eat unleavened Hold bread. Hold on. What? Feast Passover. of unleavened bread, that which contains what? Passover. Passover and what else? Yeah, feast of weeks. Right? The I mean, first fruit, uh, sheep wheat. Yeah, sheep wheat. All right? What's the second feast? Uh, feast of weeks. All right, let's read it. He said, three times a year you're going you gonna to appear before me. Thou shalt eat unleavened bread seven days as I pointed as I pointed of the month of Abib. For in it thou came out from Egypt, and none shall appear before me empty. Uh-huh. In the feast of harvest, the first fruits of thy labors, which thou hast sown in the field. Uh-huh. In the feast of ingathering, which is in the end of the year, which thou hast gathered in thy labors, all of the field. Uh-huh. Three times in the year, all thy males shall appear before the Lord God. Thou shalt not offer the blood of my sacrifice with leavened bread. Neither shall the fat of my sacrifice remain until the morning. The first of the first fruits of thy land thou shalt bring into the house of the Lord thy God. Thou shalt not see the kid in his mother's milk. Right? He said, don't see the kid. Don't boil the kid in the mother's milk. Right? When it say kid, it's talking about a goat. Baby goat. Right? Don't take, don't take the, the baby goat. And you, you sit here. You got the mother. You know what I'm saying? You milk the mother goat. Get your goat's milk. And then you say, you know what? Let me boil that. And then the towel from that same mother goat, you take that towel and then boil it in the, in the mother's milk. He just said, that's just perverse. Yeah, you don't do no stuff like that. But if you look at that, right? If you look at that. You look at that, it's like, what does that have to do with anything? Right? But looking at things like that tells you the character of God. The most high God is saying, don't sit here and take the mother. You got the mother, you milk the mother, and then boil the mother's child in the mother's milk. You kill the mother's child and put it in the milk. That's not, that's against God. He's not, that's, you can see his character. No, nah, don't do that. That's a law. He took time out of his day to tell us a law. Don't do that. About cooking. Those are the type of things you can miss as a Christian. You don't see that character. That's God. Like, this is serious for him. 
little things that we would think is little. It's just a goat, God. I'm going to eat the goat anyway. You know what I'm saying? So it's cool if I take this goat, kill another goat that's not his mother. You know what I'm saying? Get milk from that goat and boil him in that. That's no problem. I just can't boil him in the mom. Why? Same way he wouldn't let nobody. He don't. That was the same way he don't want us to die that way. He's trying to show mercy to the goat. You think he care about the goat? That's stuff way deeper. We'll talk about it one day. All right, keep going. Behold, I send an angel before thee to keep thee in the way and to bring thee into the place which I prepared. Mm -hmm. Beware of him and obey his voice. Provoke him not, for he will not pardon your transgression. Ooh, for my he, name, said that. he said, he said, for my name, what? For my name is in him. He said, beware of him and provoke him not. No, he said, beware of him and obey his voice mm -hmm. and obey his voice and provoke him not because he will not pardon thy transgression. That's important. What type of angel can pardon transgression? Y'all too. Sound like y'all too to me. Right? Grab, uh, give me John chapter 5. Before we get John chapter 5, actually, give me, uh, give me, uh, give me Genesis 8. I mean, Genesis uh, 48. Matter of fact, before, hold, think about both of those if you haven't got to them. Before that, give me Psalm 2. It's Psalm chapter 2, give me verse 1. Okay, then we're going to do, yeah, kiss the sun. Right. Then we're going to get uh, Genesis 48. Then we got to get Genesis 42. I mean 32. 32, I think. Genesis 32. So we're going to get Psalm chapter 2, verse 1. And we'll jump back into Genesis. This is Psalm chapter 2, verse 1. Why do the he why do the heathen rage? He said, Why do the heathens rage? Why do you Gentiles rage? And the people imagine a vain thing. Mm -hmm. The kings of the earth set themselves, and the rulers take counsel together against Yahuwah mm -hmm. and against his anointed, saying, Let us break their bands asunder and cast away their cords from us. Mm -hmm. He that sits in the heavens shall laugh, the Lord shall have them in derision. Mm -hmm. Then shall he speak unto them in his wrath and vex them in his sore displeasure. Yet have I set my king upon my holy hill of Zion. I will declare the decree. The Lord has said unto me, Thou art my son. This day I have begotten thee. Mm -hmm. Ask of me, and I shall give thee the heathen for thy inheritance and the uttermost parts of the earth for thy possession. All right, so this is Yahushua. Yahushua talking to the father. He, or the father talking to Yahushua. Father telling Yahushua, You ask for it. You ask for it. I'll give you all these people. Right? I give you all everything they got. I give you this whole world. Right? This is how the son became the king. Right? Watch it. Keep going. Thou shalt break them with a rod of iron. Thou shalt dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. Uh-huh. Be wise now, therefore, O ye kings. Be now he's talking to the king. He's like, listen, I just told the son that. I told him he can break y'all butt up. He's like, now king, y'all better be wise now. Watch this. Be wise now, therefore, ye kings. Be instructed, ye judges of the earth. Mm -hmm. Serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling. Mm -hmm. Kiss the son. He said, kiss the son. Lest he be angry and ye perish from the way. All right, you better be nice to the son. When his wrath is kindled but a little, blessed are all they that put their trust in him. All right. He said, I sent the angel before you now. Obey his voice now. Don't provoke him. You don't want him to be angry. He said, kiss him. Lest he be angry. He said, don't provoke him. Right? Or else he'll mess around not pardon your sin. Right? It's the same thing. Go to uh, Genesis chapter 48. What's that? The scepter shall not depart from Judah? No. It's, Which uh, one is that? I think that's 49. Oh, okay. This is uh, Manasseh and Ephraim. It's Genesis chapter 48, verse 1. And it came to pass after these things that one the that one told Joseph, Behold, thy father is sick. And he took with him his two sons, Manasseh and Ephraim. Uh huh. And one told Jacob and said, Behold, thy son Joseph comes unto thee. And Israel strengthened himself and sat upon the bed. Uh huh. And Jacob said unto Joseph, 
God Almighty appeared unto me at Luz in the land. He said, of God Almighty appeared unto me at Luz in the land of what? Canaan. Uh huh. And blessed me. And he blessed me. And said unto me, Behold, I will make thee fruitful and multiply thee, and I will make of thee a multitude of people, and will give this land to thy seed after thee for an everlasting possession. All right? So you look at it, what's happening right now is Jacob is about to pass on the blessing. Right? If you look at it, Abraham had the blessing, he passed it on to Isaac. Isaac had the blessing, and he passed it on to, uh, to, to Jacob. Right? Remember, Jacob stole a blessing from Esau. Right? And now Jacob has it, and he's about to pass it on. Right? But let's see how it passes on now. And now thy two sons, Ephraim and Manasseh, which were born unto thee in the land of Egypt, before I came unto thee into Egypt, uh -huh. are mine. As Reuben and Simeon, they shall be mine. All right? So he said, your sons are now mine. As Reuben and Simeon. Reuben was the firstborn son. Simeon was the second. So he's saying, I'm adopting your sons, Joseph, who is my son, right? So Jacob is adopting Joseph's son, his grandson. He says, but your, my grandsons are going to be to me as if they're my second, and, uh, my first and second son. So that's Reuben and Simeon are mine. Typically, the oldest son would get the birthright or get the, uh, the, the blessing. Yeah. First one. Right? So now he's saying, forget my firstborn son. Right? I'm taking on two other sons. We're going to have to come back to this and talk about it because we didn't, we didn't talk about this in Genesis when we went by. But it's going to be plenty of opportunity to go back and talk about this. But watch this. Keep going. And thy issue which thou begettest after them shall be mine. Uh huh. And shall be called after the name of their brethren in their inheritance. Uh huh. And as for me, when I came from Padan, Padan, Rachel died by me in the land of Canaan in the way. Uh huh. When yet there was but a little way to come unto e e Ephrath. Uh huh. And I buried her there in the way of Ephrath, the same as Bethlehem. And Israel beheld Joseph's sons and said, Who are these? Uh huh. And Joseph said unto his father, They are my sons, whom God has given me in this place. Uh huh. And he said, Bring them, I pray thee, unto me, and I will bless them. Now the eyes of Israel were dim for his for age, so that he could not see. And he brought them near unto him, and he kissed them and embraced them. And Israel said unto Joseph, I had not thought to see thy face, and lo, God has showed me also thy seed. Right. He said, I didn't think to see you, Joseph, but I messed around and saw your sons too. Right? He just basically saying, that's a blessing. I didn't think to see my son. I thought my son was dead. And look at this. Not only is my son alive, but now I get to see his son. All right? Keep going. And Joseph brought them out from between his knees, and he bowed himself with his face to the earth. Mm -hmm. And Joseph took them both, Ephraim in his right hand toward Israel's left hand, and Manasseh in his left hand toward Israel's right hand, mm -hmm. and brought them near unto him. And Israel stretched out so his So he right brought them like this. All right? He brought, he brought his... His oldest son, I mean, I'm sorry, his younger son in his right hand to put him in Joseph's left hand, left hand, Jacob's, Jacob's left hand. Or Israel, rather. And then you have his left hand, he was trying to put his, his older son in, the, uh, in his pop's right hand, right? But watch what Jacob do instead. And Israel stretched out his right hand and laid it upon Ephraim's head. Right? Who was the younger. And so he went like this. Reached the cross. Right? Then what happened? And he, in his left hand upon Manasseh's head, guiding his hands wittingly, for Manasseh was the firstborn. Right? Then he went like this. Right? So he got like this. Instead of just grabbing him like this, what? You know what I'm saying? Joseph, he's just looking at it like, okay, let me put you right here because you're the oldest. Because what he was trying to do is he was trying to put the oldest in his dad's right hand and the younger in his dad's left hand. But the dad, he knew what he was doing. He, his eyes were dim, so J Joseph didn't know. But he knew what he was doing. He was trying to switch it up so he could get the oldest uh, in the left hand and the, and the younger in the, in the right hand. Watch this. And he blessed in his left hand upon Manasseh's head, guiding his head wittingly, for Manasseh was the firstborn. Mm -hmm. And he blessed Joseph and said, God before whom my fathers Abraham and Isaac did walk. The God he said, he said, God before whom my fathers, Abraham and Isaac did walk. The God which fed me all my life long until this day. Who fed me all my life long until this day. 
The angel which redeemed me from all evil. The angel which did what? Redeemed me from all evil. Now, what angel can pardon sin? Y'all see it. He said, the angel that redeemed me from all what? Evil. I ain't never heard of an angel that can pardon sin. He redeemed you from all evil? We got to see when this happened. This is, uh, this is Genesis chapter 32. We got to hear about this. When did he redeem? When did the angel redeem him from all evil? This is Genesis chapter 32. Give me verse 24. Genesis chapter 32, verse 24. And Jacob was left alone, and there wrestled a man with him until the breaking of the day. And when he saw that he prevailed not against him, he touched the hollow of his thigh. And the hollow of Jacob's thigh was out of joint as he wrestled with him. Right? So Jacob is sitting here wrestling with a man. And the man, he couldn't beat him. I mean, uh, uh, the man couldn't beat Jacob. Right? So he is like, all right. So he touched the hollow of his thigh. You know what I'm saying? And after that, his joint shrunk. And he had pretty much crippled in his thigh. You know what I'm saying? After that, he lost the wrestling match. Watch this. And he said, let me go for the day break. And he said, I will not let thee go except thou bless me. Right? So then, the man was like, let me go. You know what I'm saying? The day coming. I got to get up out of here. Jacob was like, no, nah, I ain't letting you go unless you bless me. I saw you just touched my thigh in the strength. He was like, no, nah, I ain't letting you go unless you can bless me. Right? And let's see what happened next. And he said unto him, what is thy name? Uh huh. And he said, Jacob. Uh huh. And he said, Thy name shall be called no more Jacob, but Israel. That's why when we were reading in the other one, it said Israel. Same person. He gave him the name Israel. He said, No more are they going to call you Jacob. You know what they're going to call you? Israel. At that very moment. You know what Israel means? Here, Terry, you watch this. For as a prince hast thou power with God and with men and has prevailed. He said, As a prince, it means ruler. So as a ruler, you have. Excuse me. As a ruler, you have power with God. Just like a ruler, you have power with God. Right? And you will prevail. And you're going to overcome. Right? So that's why that's what Israel means. He gave him that name. He said, no longer are they going to call you Jacob. They're going to call you Israel. At that moment, you know what he did? He redeemed them from all evil. Right? Just by giving them that name, he redeemed them from all evil. He changed his identity in God. Right? Watch this. Keep going. And Jacob asked him and said, Tell me, I pray thee, thy name. Uh huh. And he said, Wherefore is it that thou dost ask after my name? He said, Nah, I don't understand. Why, why you want to know my name now? All right? Keep going. And he blessed him there. And he did what? Blessed him there. And he blessed him there. And Jacob called the name of the place. Let's Peniel. see what he named the place. He called it what? Peniel. He called the name of the place Peniel. I wonder what that means. For I have seen God face to face, and my life is preserved. I thought it was an angel. We just read that. I thought, I mean, I thought it was an angel. You got this man that he, I mean, it started off to tell you a man, right? A man was just, and he thought this man had special powers, and the man was clearly sent for God because he blessed him. Then all of a sudden, he said, I saw who face to face? God. That's the angel that redeemed him. Same one that can uh, remove sin. Don't provoke him now. Don't you darn provoke him. He said he saw who face to face? I've seen God face to face. This is John chapter 5. He said he saw John. I mean, he said he saw God face to face. It's John chapter 5. Give me verse. uh, Give me uh, verse uh, 35. It's John chapter 5, verse 35. He was a burning and a shining light, and ye were willing for a season to rejoice in his light. But I have greater witness than that of John, for the works which the Father has given me to finish, the same works that I do bear witness of me, that the Father has sent me. Uh huh. What Father, he said? And the Father himself, which has sent me, has bear witness of me. Ye have neither heard his voice at any time, nor seen his shape. He said, You have neither what? Heard his voice at any time, nor seen his shape. He said, Y'all never heard God, nor have you seen his shape. 
So then, when Jacob was sitting there, he was like, man, I wrestled with this man. He touched my thigh. I told him, man, I ain't letting you go until, until you bless me. Then he blessed him. Named him Yisrael. Then after that, he named the place Peniel. And he said, because I seen God face to face. Y'all sure came back and said, no, you ain't seen God. You thought you did, you ain't seen God. He said, you've never seen him, nor have you, never you heard his voice. Right? He was dealing with Yahweh Shua. Right? Yahweh Shua became before he came in the flesh. Right? That's the things that we look at. It's important that we see these things. All this stuff testify to Messiah. All the stuff that we look at, all of it lined back up to the Messiah. It's important that we know this and see it. Alright? Let's finish off uh, chapter 23. Is Exodus chapter 23, give me verse 20. Behold, I seen an angel before thee to keep thee in the way and to bring thee into the place which I prepared. Uh huh. Beware of him and obey his voice. Provoke him not, for he will not pardon your transgression. Uh huh. For my name is in him. But if thou shalt indeed obey his voice and do all that I speak, then I will be an enemy unto thine enemies mm -hmm. and an adversary unto thine adversaries. Mm -hmm. Notice that all the stuff that we read in God has conditions. If you do what I say, I'll be an enemy to your enemy. Right? And we're reading over in Leviticus. If you do what I say, I'll make the old sword. I mean, I'll have you eating the old sword because of the new. Right? All these things are conditions. If, you, if you're a Christian and you don't know this stuff, when you look at the new Bible, you know what you can say? God loves everybody unconditionally. Right? If you know God's character, it's like everything this man has ever done has conditions. Then you look into the New Testament and you start to notice things. You notice when Yahushua say, greater love has no man than this, that he give his life for it for his friend. And you are my friend if you do what I command you. Like that stands out to you when you know history. If you don't know history, you, you ain't read that if command part. Like what's if and command? That stuff ain't important. Greater love has no love one than this, and you die for my friend. They just stop right there, and they make assumptions from there. They say, I'm God's friend, and he died. He died for me because I'm his friend. How you know it's his friend? He told you you're only his friend if you do what, you, what he commands. Right? Keep going. For my angel shall go before thee and bring thee into the Amorites and the Hittites and the Perizzites mm -hmm. and the Canaanites, the Hivites and the Jebusites, and I will cut them off. Mm -hmm. Thou shalt not bow down to their gods, nor serve them, nor do after their works, but thou shalt utterly overthrow them and quite break down their images. Mm -hmm. And ye shall serve the Lord your God, and he shall bless thy bread mm -hmm. and thy water, and mm -hmm. I will take sickness away from the midst of thee. Mm -hmm. There shall nothing cast their young, nor be barren in thy land. He said, he gonna take sickness away from us, no, no one gonna cast their young, right? No miscarriages, no stillbirths, none of that stuff. He said, none of that stuff is going to happen to us. All we got to do, do what he said. It's a different community at this point. Right? It's a different community. Keep going. Nor be barren in thy land. The number of thy days I will fulfill. I will send my fear before thee and will destroy all the people to whom thou shalt come. Mm -hmm. And I will make all thine enemies turn their backs unto thee. Mm -hmm. And I will send hornets before thee, which shall drive out the Hivite, the Canaanite, and the Hittite from before thee. Right? So what are you doing right now? Remember, we're in the wilderness. We're right at Mount, we in uh, Mount Horeb, Mount Sinai, right? In the middle of the desert, right? And our plan is to get to a place called, that we re uh, reference as the promised land. But we know this land is occupied by people. He telling us, don't even sweat. I'm going to send my angel before you know what I'm saying? I'm going to send hornets out there. I'm going to take these people out the land. Y'all gonna It's going to be cake for y'all. All you got to do is do what we say. Do what I say. Right? So now all we got to do is just walk in. And that's what he's trying to inspire them to do. Remember, the backdrop of what's happening right now 
Ten Commandments was said by the voice of God from a mountain. Everybody got scared. They backed up. They said no. Once he got to the tent, the, the whole implication that the Most High God would have kept on going. All the stuff we reading, he would have been speaking all this stuff from the mountain. But after he got done with the tent, they were like, all right, that's enough. We'll mess around and die. Right? And Most High God didn't say, oh, now y'all silly. I wasn't going to kill y'all. He said, after they said that, he was like, you have well spoken. <laughs> he looking he like, yeah, I would have killed y'all, but if I kept on talking. He said, y'all said the right thing. He was like, then they were like, you know what? Moses, why don't you go up there talk to God just like you used to, and you bring us the message. So then Moses went up, and all these three chapters that we've been reading, we've been reading what God has been telling Moses. Right? After that, Moses is going to come back in chapter 24, and he's going to tell everything to the people. Everything that we just read, he's going to tell that to the people. Right? Keep going. We'll read, we'll read that next week, but let's finish up uh, chapter 23. By little and little, I will drive them out from before thee until thou be increased and inherit the land. Uh -huh. And I will set thy bounds from the Red Sea even unto the Sea of the Philistines and from the desert unto the river, for I will deliver the inhabitants of the land into your hand. Uh -huh. Thou shalt drive them out before thee. Thou shalt make no covenant with them, nor with their gods. They shall not dwell in thy land, lest they make thee sin against me. For if thou serve their gods, I will surely be a snare unto thee. He said, if you serve their gods, I will trap you. That's the, God, that's the most high God talk. And it's important that we know his character. His character is, if you do something I don't want to do, your butt getting trapped. Your butt, you're going to be set up. I'm setting you up. right? You're going to think you're doing something all right. You do something I told you not to do. I'm going to set your butt up. That's our God. It's important to know his character. If you don't know that, then it's just like you don't know who you're dealing with. You just think it's what he'll just keep giving me chances do we know that from our book i don't know that man he'd be out there keeping score what do you tell what do you tell what do you tell us in the wilderness when he got fed up with us he said 10 times your boat was out here provoking me you won't find one that one one scripture where he'll say all right this is the second time y'all no warning it's the third time just when he got to 10 he said hey he didn't tell him nothing like, if it gets to 10 i'm gonna get your butt no warning just out of nowhere, he just said, all right, 10 times, that's it. Your butt's going to be out here 40 years. You know what our people, we're going to read it, but you know what our people did after that? They're like, no, nah, my bad. My bad. No, nah, we'll go up there and we'll take the land. He told me, like, you might as well not even try to take it now. You try to do it now, I told you you could. If you would have did it when I told you to do it, y'all would have won. If you try to take it now, I'm going to let you know the truth. Your butt's going to get ran off. They went up there, no, nah, okay, let's just do it. We messed up with God. Let's just, let's just do what he originally told us to do. Hey, but got chased out of there so quick. Most like God ain't with you no more. He told you he is with you when you were scared. Yeah, he told you to go, they didn't go. He told you not to go, then they went. Make sure you don't touch him, baby. He's a, he's a bad butt. All right, keep going. That was the end of the chapter. That was the end? Yeah. All right, so next week we're going to jump into uh, chapter 24. Chapter 24 is Moses coming back off of the mountain. All right? He gets done, he hears all these commandments comes off of the mount and he goes to speak to the people right he gives the people all the commandments and all that good stuff and then enters them into the covenant of the most high god the old covenant it's the covenant the whole book is set up on right so he enters them into the to the, to the old covenant and then uh and then we'll kind of go from there and kind of see what else happens at this point it gets a little bit more into narrative we just read three chapters of uh, commandments so it gets more into narrative, just kind of, you know, the story, what happens, how people are feeling, what people are saying. And then a little bit after that, we'll get back into, well, actually, what'll come next is a little bit of a fallout. Then we'll deal with, um, we'll deal with the tabernacle, how the tabernacle is made, all the materials. We won't spend a whole lot of time on that. We'll just maybe get some visuals or something so everybody can see it. And then we'll move on past that. And then we got to talk about the priest. All right, then we talk about the priest, and then we'll get back into more commandments that come a little later on. So it should, it should be real good over the next few weeks just to understand what God expects, how he looked at things, what he considers to be righteous, and then we can move forward from there. And as we get into the, later on, get into the New Testament, it's going to open up all our understanding when it comes to the New Testament. You understand all the parameters that God has already set. And when you see the New Testament, it just makes it easier at that point to understand. When you don't have no parameters, you have to try to guess and match and fix things and make sure it works and all that stuff, and it's impossible. You can't do that. It's too many variables. But when you have parameters to tell you, listen, it's going to be, if you, if you got, if you just got, a, I'm trying to think of a good example. If 
you got, if you had to like, if you had like a whole bunch of blank spots on this wall, and each little blank spot can turn over, and any one of those could be the, the million dollar ticket, right? And there's all over this wall, a whole bunch of blank, there's thousands of little blank spots, and any one could be the million dollar ticket. And they say, it's only one million dollar ticket, you got to find it. Right? And you just go and you just flipping over spots like I gotta find this and only have a certain time in it. It'll be forever. You never know. I mean, you might get it the first one and it might take you forever, forever to get it. You just trying to flip them over to find it. Some of these things you gotta get a ladder to climb up to the top and get. It, right? But if if you got somebody to say, you know what? I already got some information, it's only gonna be in this area. Right? And they highlight it. it's just this area, right? I've already checked a lot of this stuff. It's only going to be in this area. Then you can know what, you know what, I ain't going to waste no time. I know I got to get a ladder to get to that. You save time, get your ladder, get up there, and you start flipping over there. It ain't, you're still not going to hit it exact, but you have a smaller area to start working with. That's how the Old Testament works. It's telling you all this other stuff, crap. Right? There's no way that God going way out there or way out there. We know who God is. He ain't doing nothing and he ain't doing that. Right? Now you know whatever you're looking for is going to be in this small circle right here. Right? So now when we look at the New Testament, we don't have to think of maybe this means this. Maybe we know it means something around this area. What makes sense with the book? All right, let me read it again. Ah, I get it. Right? That's what the book does for us. If you don't read the book, the whole book, and don't understand it, and are not familiar with it, you can think whatever you want. You'll be all over the place. Right? The more you constrain yourself with the word, the more the, more, the love of God is going to show and reflect in you and then in reflecting the things that you do. So this we do the most high God permit. Any questions? All right, well, let's pray out.